everyone. In this video, we're going to go over some basics with how to use AWS Lambda to kind of help get you started. Uh, so uh, before going anything more advanced, um, it'd be a good idea just to go over some basics on how to use um, Lambdas, how to create them, and how to run them in the console. Uh, so that's what we're going to do here. Uh, if you ha don't already have an account, you'll need to go ahead and create one. And then once you create one, you should get to this, this homepage right here. Uh, you can see I have Lambda right here and recently visited, but you probably won't have this if you just created your account. Uh, so what you can do is go in the search bar and just type Lambda. And you'll see Lambda show up um, on the list here. Click on it. And we'll get our Lambdas open right here. I'm going to go ahead and create a new function on the top right. Uh, we'll do one from scratch. You could use a blueprint if there's something you want to do and there's some way to help you get started with it, like uh, reading from a table or S3 buckets. Uh, we'll go over doing some of these things probably in future videos, but for now, we'll start with just a scratch uh, blank project here. We'll call this my first Lambda. Uh, you'll see here like spaces can't be allowed uh, or not allowed. Um, right here, you'll see the rules on that. Uh, then we'll run time. Uh, we're going to stick with Python. So we'll do Python 3.11. And I'm going to choose the ARM64 architecture. Uh, that co the costs for that are slightly less, so we'll use that one here in this case. Uh, we'll have a default execution role. Uh, we'll just create a new Lambda role. We're not going to worry about roles in the moment. Uh, for those just on Lambda, so we'll leave that as is. And for these advanced settings, we're not going to use VPC or tags or anything, so we'll leave all those blank as well. Uh, we'll go and create a new function from here. And once this finishes here, you'll see this function overview up here. If you scroll down here, we'll have access to the actual code. Uh, some other tests here, which we'll get to those later, but for now, here we go. A very basic function in our code we can edit directly here. So let's go ahead and make some changes here. I'm going to delete this JSON. I'm not going to use JSON in this tutorial. Uh, we'll delete all of this as well. And I'll make this a dictionary and I'll put some new values inside the body here. Uh, so the first thing we're going to go over are these two values up here, event and context. The event is this JSON formatted document that contains da data that the Lambda function can process. Uh, so in our test here, we can figure a test event. We can pass in some event JSON. This passes in some data we can use inside our Lambda. Uh, context is a little different. The context object here will provide different uh, methods and properties uh, about information on the Lambda that we can use. Uh, so for example, if you look in the AWS documentation, We'll see here we have a method for getting the remaining milliseconds before it times out, function name, version, memory limit, uh, also different things here we can use. You, know, you may not use context very much, but in the case you need one of these values, uh, you can get it from the context. So to help make this a little more clear, let's go ahead and print out the event. And we'll print out the context. And then we can use this to kind of get an idea of what it is. Uh, so if I go ahead now and look configure a test event, I can do a test of name or a, a name of test. Uh, and then this event JSON, we'll leave it as this key one, key two, key three, value one, value two, value three. That's fine. We'll save that. And now we have a test event we can use to test our Lambda. We can click the test button and it'll run the test. And this execution results panel will open up. It'll give us the response. Our logs will show up down here. Uh, but the logs here are not very good. Um, not everything shows up there. Sometimes things get cut off. So if we go over to the monitor tab at the top here, we click on this view CloudWatch logs button on the right. This will open up the CloudWatch logs, which will give us more information on our logs. And in my opinion, a little better format and a little easier to read. Okay, and there we go. Uh, now if we click on the most recent log, in this case, we only have one, um, but it should be the top one, it'll be the most recent. Uh, we can see what we have here. You'll see here that we don't have anything showing. That's because I forgot one thing. When you make code changes to your Lambda, you can't just run it. Uh, it won't run the new Lambda code. We'll need to hit the deploy button. You'll see here changes not deployed. I forgot to press that button. So let's go ahead and press that now. That will deploy those. And we'll run a test event again. Now you'll see here our logs look different. Let's go over here and look at them in CloudWatch. Click on the newest one again. Okay, so we can see our event right here. Our event is just that JSON event. Uh, we passed in, which in this case was just key one, key two, key three with the values. And we can see our Lambda context right below it, which you'll see has all these different values in it. Um, we can call them off of that and get them here. Um, you see it's, it's like a class, so we can call the different uh, functions or properties off of that. And uh, you can see them all inside of here. Uh, so that's what event and context are. Um, most of the time we'll just use the event, but the context may be useful in some situations. Okay, now that we have that set up, let's add some values to our event. And then we'll uh, get access to them inside of our Lambda. 
So instead of passing these keys like this, let's pass in two different values. Um, we'll just do like a user ID value. Uh, and this is JSON, so make sure you put double quotes around them like that. Uh, and this will just be set to, I don't know, 45. It could be really anything. Uh, let's also add, um, actually, we'll keep just one for now. We'll do just this user ID 45. Let's save this. And now we can access this value like any other dictionary in Python. So I can do something like user underscore ID equals. And actually, real quick, let's go ahead and just make this bigger so it's easier to see for all of you. Um, make this full screen. Um, otherwise, it might be kind of hard to see. So we have here our user ID. This will equal event. And then like in any dictionary, we can do dot get to get a key. And we'll do the key of user ID. Now we look inside of our event. You'll notice we have this user ID key here that we're going to find. And this will get the value of 45. So now user ID should be 45. We can, in our body down here, we can do user ID. Instead of equal to user underscore ID to get that value, we can deploy those changes. And if we run our test again, you can see here it's probably a little small, but user ID is set to 45 in the body. Okay, now that we have our user ID got from the event, uh, if we wanted to go ahead and just do a test with the context, we could as well. We could do something like um, milliseconds remaining. So that equal to context dot, and then if you look at our lambda context docs again, uh, we can get this get remaining time in mil in millis milliseconds here. We copy this. We can then do context dot that function name and just call it like the function, and we can add this inside of here. We'll do um, remaining underscore millis. This is equal to milliseconds remaining. Now let's go ahead and deploy and test these changes. And I will see that it took like almost no time to run. So we have almost all of our time remaining um, right here. So that's how you use the event and context uh, values that you see in our handler. Um, that kind of covers the general basics of those two. And of course, you can add more values and do some other things there. But for the basics, that kind of covers it there. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is, is using environment variables. So if we scroll up, I get a full screen here, and we look at our monitor tab right here, or not our monitor, sorry, our configuration tab right here, and we have this value down here, this, this section down here for environment variables. We can go ahead and edit these, hit add environment variables. Now we can add any key value pair here, and save it, and then we'll have access to it in our environment variables. So I can do something like org underscore ID, so it's equal to um, 55 or any really any value there. If you want to go ahead and encrypt them, you can encrypt them here. In this case, keep things simple. We're not going to mess with that. Um, and we can add more by clicking this add environment variable button there. But in this case, we have one. We'll go ahead and just save that, and I will see it showing up here. Org ID value 55. Now the question is, how do we access this in our code? Well, if we go back to our code. Now we can import something to actually interact with our environment variables. I like using the environ package. So from OS import environ. And then down here, we can do something like org underscore ID equals environ dot get, just like a normal dictionary, SCN our key, in this case, org underscore ID. And then we down here, uh, I'll put it right below the user ID. I can do org ID, set that equal to org ID like that. We'll go ahead and deploy these changes. And then test again. And you'll see that now we grabbed our org ID from our environment variables. So using those three things, event, context, and environment variables, uh, that's the main things you'll need to use to get your code set up uh, in a Lambda. From here, we can use like the Boto3 library, uh, Boto Core, or something else to interact with other AWS services, connect things together. And I want to come back and make more videos on that in the future. But just to get you started with Lambdas and get kind of the basics out of the way so you can build Lambdas, um, that should hopefully get you started. If you have any questions, let me know. But that's where we're going to end the video today. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.